Hollywood has always been gay. In this video series, we look at gay stars or moments that either defined or were hidden from history. Welcome to the Gay Hollywood Files. Kerwin Matthews was an American actor best known for playing the titular heroes in The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, The Three Worlds of Gulliver, and Jack the Giant Killer. After moving to Los Angeles in 1954, Matthews acted at the Pasadena Playhouse in various plays. While there, he met the head of casting for Columbia Pictures, who was impressed by the handsome actor and gave him a seven-year studio contract. He didn't immediately strike it big in Hollywood, but slowly worked himself up to leading man status. His first credited film role was in Five Against the House, released in 1955. The film starred established actor, Guy Madison, and though Matthew's screen time was significantly smaller, he stole the show. The fresh-faced actor was on everyone's lips at the end of the movie, and thus started his path to a successful acting career. The film is about a casino heist and received praise from critics upon its release. His first sizable role was in the 1957 film Noir, The Garment Jungle, which was based on actual articles about gangsters in the dress manufacturing business during that era. But his breakthrough role was in the 1958 film The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, which is considered to be one of the best Sinbad films ever made. Even today, the film carries a 100% approval rating on the film review aggregator website, Rotten Tomatoes. While working on the 1961 film, The Devil at Four O'Clock, Matthews met Tom Nichol, who would eventually become his life partner of 46 years. This action film would eventually start the disaster movie craze in the decades that followed. Golden Age era Hollywood star Kerwin Matthews passed away in his sleep in the early hours of this morning. Matthews is best known for being the only gay actor to portray three legendary action heroes. He portrayed Sinbad, Gulliver, and Jack the Giant Killer in the 60s. Kerwin retired from acting during the 70s to settle down. The actor is survived by his life partner of 46 years, Tom Nichol. The couple owned an antique shop in San Francisco, which they opened at the end of 1978. The Boys in the Band was a 1970 film and is often cited as a milestone in the history of queer cinema. It is one of the first major American motion pictures to revolve around gay characters and not portray them in a satirical, campy, or stereotypical fashion. It received mostly favorable reviews by critics, but the film was perceived in different ways throughout the gay community. Some agreed with most critics and believed the film was making great strides for queer representation. Others thought it portrayed a group of gay men wallowing in self-pity. The film was based on Mark Crowley's 1968 off-Broadway play of the same name and starred an ensemble cast of actors. Kenneth Nelson portrayed a gay man hosting a birthday party for his gay friends, but things take an unexpected turn when his straight friend joins the party. Kenneth Nelson was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for his role in the film. And I bet you never knew that the film, The Boys in the Band, inspired an adult film that is also considered a milestone in queer history. Boys in the Sand was a landmark gay film released in 1971. The film's title is a parodic reference to the 1970 film, The Boys in the Band. It was the first film of its nature to include credits, and also the first to be reviewed by Variety magazine. Produced on a budget of only $8,000, the film is set on Fire Island. In an unprecedented move, Boys in the Sand had its theatrical debut on December 29, 1971, at the 55th Street Playhouse in New York City. A queue several city blocks long formed outside the Playhouse. It made nearly $25,000 during its first week, landing it on Variety magazine's list of the week's top-grossing films. Within six months, the film had grossed $140,000 and was continuing to open in theaters across the United States and around the world. It owed much of its success to positive word-of-mouth promotion, and it's also credited as the film which made the genre less taboo. With the success of Boys in the Sand, actor Casey Donovan became an underground celebrity but struggled to break free from the genre and never really moved on to more traditional, mainstream films. 
The gorgeous Rod Bauer was a model back in the 60s. Photographer Walter Kunzes of Champion Studios stumbled upon Rod Bauer on the night he won the state wrestling championship title in his weight class. Inspired by Bauer's impressive physique, Walter approached him with an offer to model for Champion Studios. Bauer quickly became a cover boy and posed for various issues, showing off his muscular physique for Champion Studios fitness magazines. He eventually retired from modeling to coach football and other sports, but fans will never forget his modeling career, especially the homoerotic photo shoot he did with his best friend Scott Manley. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out some of the other videos on this channel.